Please go ahead, sir. We are live now. Thank you so much. So a very, very good evening to everyone. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to welcome the galaxy of eminent speakers today at this important webinar on impact of union budget on capital market. We do it every year. And uh, again, you know, we are, we are holding it today. And we have with us eminent speakers, Mr. Lar Chaturvedi, Chairman, National Council on Capital Market Association and Chief Executive Officer of Line Securities. Mr. S.C. Agarwal, CMD, SMC Global Securities and Managing Committee Member of SHM. Mr. Sandeep Bharadwaj, Co-Chairman, National Council on Capital Market and Chief Executive Officer, Retail Broking, IIFL Securities. C.A. Atul Kumar Gupta, Advisor, Estrasur Legal Services Private Limited. Mr. Madan Sabnavis, Chief, Chief Economics, Bank of Baroda. Madam Amisa Vora, Joint Managing Director, Prabhu Das Leeladhar. Dr. Saurav Agarwal, Professor in the Institute of Finance and Managing Committee Member of SHM, Mr. Narendra Vadwa, Managing Director, SKI Capital and Managing Committee Member of SHM, Mr. Karthik Srinivasan, Senior Vice President and Group Head, Ikra Limited, Dr. Mayank Josipura, Associate Dean, School of Business Management, and MIMS. Sir, so we have many experts to give their valuable views on every aspect of the subject. I warmly welcome you all and welcome all the participants to this webinar. As we all know, there are various announcements in the budget which will impact the different sectors of the economy and directly or indirectly, these budget proposals will also impact our capital market in short run or long run. So we intend to discuss all such aspects and I hope the participants will be greatly benefited by today's discussion. So to proceed, I request Mr. Lav Chaturvedi, Chairman of the Council, to kindly give his views and also moderate the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rajar. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I would like to welcome all the panelists today uh, for the great discussion that we are going to have. Um, and I really welcome all the participants uh, who are here. Hello? Yeah, uh, where I, I welcome all the participants who are here with, with us today. And uh, we assure you that we will have a very fruitful discussion on the capital markets impact due to the union budget. Uh, and we will probably try to give you various perspective on the time horizon as well. Um, obviously, as Mr. Rajuris said, that budget got presented on February 1st, Tuesday by our finance minister, Nendra Sitaraman. Uh, this budget is very interesting budget, but this is because this is one of the very unique budget that is called as an extremely progressive budget, but not that populist budget. So it's very interesting that being a progressive but not yet populist. Uh, and obviously today in this session, we will divulge more on that part. It clearly comes out as a spending bazooka budget as everybody is talking about it. There is a 35% increase in the capital investments, private capital, you know, in the overall capital investments to seven and a half lakh crore, which is a very significant amount considering where we were not that long ago. And from last year itself, it's a 35% increase. It clearly comes out as a pro-growth budget with keeping the fiscal on a more balanced side, which is what, according to me, is the need of an R. Uh, definitely addresses to an extent as much as possible the pandemic-led challenging business environment that we have been experiencing for the last couple of years. Uh, and clearly, the budget focuses across the board uh, various sectors, it touches probably ev everything um, that is critical for our economy to, to be taken forward. Housing for all is a very key component of that. Infrastructure spending, and as we all know, the infrastructure spending is something which is not just the spending, it is actually uh, uh, a multiplier. It is all uh, effect on the economy and also has the job growth as well, the job creation, which is a very essential requirement of our country. Um, and it does, it does, it does addresses that as well. Interestingly, it touches upon the you know, digitization in a big way, not just by having a you know the fiber optics in the rural area and doing it the hardware or the infrastructure side, but also as part of the policy with the 75 business you know banking banking districts with the uh, you know digital currency uh, using blockchain or any other technologies doing the crypto tax and various other other initiatives which are there for the startups and the over digital economy is very heartening because that probably is going to be one of the pillars 
of our economy as we go forward, in addition to the spending, which is large, large infra spending and other areas. Clearly, one of the key areas where in FY21, there was a bit of a miss uh, was was a divestment area. Even now, I think we are a bit, bit, bit far from our target. And only one thing, which is LIC IPO, uh, which, which if it happens by March, will be a big, very huge event, not just for the fiscal perspective from the country, but it's a huge event from the capital market perspective. And it's not too far. As far as the latest announcement, we are still looking at March. Yesterday, the embedded value of LIC came out around 5 lakh crore is what they're estimating with the embedded value valuation of around between two and a half to three. The total valuation will be around 15 lakh crore with a, even with the 10% or 5%. This clearly will be an event, something which has never happened in India with that scale and size of that IPO. It clearly is something which is one of the most important event. Uh, from the uh, from the capital market perspective, obviously we are seeing um, that uh, FPIs have kind of have uh, taken the money out over the last two, three months up to the tune of 35,000 crore or so. We have to probably keep an eye on that flow as well. Um, from the IPO perspective, this year was almost five times the previous year with regard to numbers, count as well as the value. Uh, and we probably have to see how this budget will probably prevent propeller for the IPO market for next year. Um, there is the DMAT account holder. Uh, we will probably go over that as well, which currently is seven and a half crores, which is almost double than what it used to be a few years ago. And we have to see how the retail participation also pan out. On the downside, uh, obviously there are a few challenges. Um, we clearly see the crowding out the private investment because with the 16 and a half lakh crore around borrowing program, there, there is an element of risk for the crowding out, which needs to be addressed, which has the potential impact on the capital market as well. Um, then we have the inflationary pressure. Inflationary pressure brings the issue of the price stability. And with the price stability comes the monetary policy, whether it's the monetary policy in India or the Fed monetary policy. Either way, it impacts uh, the Indian capital market. And then there is a fiscal element which is there, which also leads to the yield tightening uh, if, if it stretches. So that is something that we need to watch out for. And other two things that I think we need to watch out for would be the currency market. Uh, clearly in itself or due to the FPI flows that may uh, reverse um, significantly, uh, you know, it may continue to be on the reverse direction if the Fed stand uh, and you know, increases the you know, interest rate faster than what is anticipated. Uh, and lastly, the sovereign rating, uh, which I, which obviously we have been hearing a lot of comments around sovereign rating, um, and uh, India being being the net borrower would probably uh, keep an eye on that space because that may also impact the yields uh, from that perspective. So there are a lot of areas um, that we have uh, from again we are almost like three and a half trillion dollar market cap, um, and we may be a top five in the world very soon. We are on sixth and not too far from UK. So we may be a top five um, market cap countries um, in the world, which is which is significant considering the growth rate and considering what we're aspiring for with the double digit growth rate. If it can have, if it can be sustained, we may be both $5 trillion economy and $5 trillion market cap in just no time. So a lot of exciting times ahead, but we need to see how this is going to pan out we need to navigate across, you know, this, this process and see how it's going to uh, impact all of us individually and collectively. So with that, I would like to call upon the first panelist, uh, Mr. Vesya Garwal, who is a CMD of SMC Global Security and uh, would like to take your view, sir. Uh, whenever it comes to you, the one question, obviously, please give your overall view and its impact on, you know, on the capital markets. But just on the very specific, what do you believe Nifty FI22, FI23 is something that I think our participant would like to see your views. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Lav Chaturvedi ji. You are yes, always pleasant. Your personality is great. Uh, yes, you keep the momentum to all the speakers. So good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Mr. D.S. Rajora, Assistant Secretary General, and its team and associate to conduct this webinar on impact of union budget on capital market. And further, I would also like to thankful to associate for giving me 
and this opportunity to share my thought and views on this topic. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I would also like to congratulate finance minister uh, that uh, this budget is very growth oriented and uh, Mr. Lau Chaturvedi also said in his speech because uh, five state is having elections, so it can be populist. Everyone expecting like this, but it is not. So that is a great achievement and she has not imposed any new taxes. Uh, considering so many constraints and uh, so that uh, that also give credit to her. So it, it, it could be seen that Indian stock market has welcomed the union budget amid several announcements in the budget. Those are by space presented by finance minister Nirmala Sitarama. The budget continued the focus on quality expenditure and increase the CAPEX by 35%. The impact of continued focus on infra and logistics through the PM Gati Sakti plan, uh, plan will also exit to other sectors and benefits all industries. Built around the pillar of development, the PM Gati Sakti plan for infrastructure, inclusive development and productive enhancement, energy transition and climate action, and financing of investment. This year's budget addresses the needs of every sector and segment of the society. Apart from public-private investment, clean energy focus is amply clear with additional allocation to solar PLI and policy around battery swapping. Moreover, the focus is also on inclusive growth as several measures were announced to ease supply side issues and promote domestic manufacturing. The focus on spending more would create employment opportunities and help the kick starting the investment cycle, which in turn would help to strengthen the economic growth. The government also appears to be following through on its efforts to improve budget transparency by keeping previously of budget spending on budget. The Honorable Finance Minister Nirmal Sitaraman has presented a pro reform and progressive budget setting the tone for faster growth on the journey to become a $5 trillion economy, $5 trillion economy, as well as laying out the blueprint for the next 25 years for India. In the recent budget, a large increase in allocation to roads and bridges from Rs. 1, 1,13,875 crore in financial year 22 to Rs. 1,80,000 301 crore in financial 23 is a big jump and can have a trickle down effect on input industries such as steel and cement and improve the infrastructure and improve road infrastructure. A higher outlay under the PM Awas Yojana will be beneficial to real estate and related ancillary industries. The announcement of green bonds will be of great help for PSU in the shift of to sustainability. Higher level of economic activity will enhance the credit growth of the bank. The MSME sector, which was the worst hit in the pandemic, saw an increased allocation in financial year 23. The focus on boosting manufacturing as well as an understand emphasizes on areas such as startups, modern stability, modern mobility, and clean energy shows the firm has prioritized long term growth. Lower fiscal deficits is always positive for FPI sentiments about India. The fiscal deficit at 6.9% for financial year 22 and estimated at 6.4% for financial year 23 uh, is still way above fiscal responsibility and budget management targets. The good news is that the downward journey is being calibrated. Finance minister has spoken about reduction in fiscal deficit to below 4.5% by financial year 26. Besides deep reforms like Prime Minister Gati Sakti, a national master plan for multimodal connectivity, essentially a digital platform to bring 16 ministries, including railways and roadways, together for integrated planning and coordinated implementation of infrastructure connectivity projects will surely attract foreign investors. <laughs> 
मेक इन इंडिया इज स्ट्रॉन्ग कैपिटल मार्केट थीम एमाउंटिंग फ्रॉम द यूनियन बजट गवर्नमेंट हैज अनाउंसड एन इंक्रीज इन डोमेस्टिक डिफेंस कैपेक्स एलोकेशन फ्रॉम 58% टू 68% दिस विल बी सपोर्टेड बाय एन एडिशनल एलोकेशन ऑफ ₹19500 करोड़ एज पीएसयू इंसेंटिव्स फॉर डिफेंस मैन्युफैक्चरर्स दैट इज लाइकली टू बी वन ऑफ द की थीम्स टू ड्राइव मार्केट्स इन द कमिंग ईयर नाउ मेक इन इंडिया इंसेंटिव्स हैव बीन extended in solar equipment too finally budget 2022 has under lined sustainable and digital themes as a market story for the coming year besides india is considering battery swapping for electro electric cars rather than charging stations as it seeks to spur adoption of cleaner transport in its notoriously polluted and crowded cities private sector will be encouraged to develop sustainable and innovative business models for battery or energy as a service a battery swapping policy could be a big booster for all the startups already working in this space now with big data likely to become central to emerging digital themes like artificial intelligence uh, machine learning iot etc budgets 2022 have uh, has a quoted infrastructure status to data center grant of status is a positive move by the government and is an acknowledgement of the growing dependency of the success of technology enabled sectors on data centers with the privatization of air india and the announcement of lic ipo there is a clear message from the government that they now play the role of a facilitator the center has lowered its disinvestment target for the current financial year by over 55% to rupees 78000 crore for the next year as well the government has set an achievable target of rupees 65000 crore even as it expects completion of big target uh, big ticket privatization of bharat petroleum corporation limited and shipping corporation of india limited among others going forward a moderate amount of rupees 65000 crore is more realistic given the time frame taken for such transactions it is evident that the government is unlikely to pursue psu disinvestment in an aggressive manner over the next 1 2 years so far the government has moved up rupees 12030 crore from psu disinvestment and strategic sale this includes rupees 2700 crore from air india privatization and another 9330 crore from minority stake sale in various cpu cpsc encouragingly the union budget 2022 will be a great booster to our fragile economy it is expected that india is well positioned to commence on a new economic up cycle over the next few years eventually these announcements and allocations are sure to attract foreign players to participate in india growth story to conclude the biggest sports of the indian economy are the health of large firms the roaring business the it and the it enabled sectors are doing including the emergence of unicorns in a number of areas and the strength some parts of the financial sector uh, mr rao yeah you asked me uh, what should be the nifty i am expecting uh, in 18 months nifty should cross uh, 21000 yes. so yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah uh, yeah i am very much optimistic about economy yeah, and the yeah, yeah. market So, thank you so much I for your my speech yeah. here thank you very much once oh, that was very insightful sir uh, and you know it was very detailed and plus it definitely gave a you know directional view of 18 months to our viewers and participants and i completely concur with you sir as always i do uh, and is that these are you know ek wo sir wo wo tak wo tak ki apna time aayega मुझे लगता है सर टाइम आ गया है तो अभी अभी आ गया है सो मार्केट यू विल क्रॉस यूके एज यू राइटली सेड यू विल बी द फर्स्ट फाइव इकोनॉमी इन द वर्ल्ड सो यू विल क्रॉस यूके दिस टाइम एंड आवर ग्रोथ इज द मैक्सिमम कंसीडरिंग द ओल्ड डेवलप्ड इकोनॉमी पुट टुगेदर वी आर डूइंग द बेस्ट 9.27% ग्रोथ सो फॉर सो फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस इज अ लाइफ टाइम ऑपर्चुनिटी सी द नॉमिनल ग्रोथ इट इज अराउंड 17% Yes, that's what I'm saying. WPI is uh, more than eight percent on an average. That's so, so there is so much, so so many opportunities for all for for all yes, of us yes. there out there. And uh, as inclusive as this growth will be, the you know the sustainable that it it will be. Thank you so much for those words, sir. As always, with your guidance, uh, you know we always learn a lot. 
and thanks to th thanks for that today sir i will now move to our next participant sandeep uh, a co-chair and uh, and my colleague uh, from iifl securities um, so, and the ceo of iifl securities retail broking sandeep would love to hear your views and especially participants would like to know from the retail participation broking industry dmat and other and other areas uh, that you may want to throw your light upon over to you sandeep Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Lab Chaturvedi Chairman, HM, as well as uh, uh, it is wonderful to uh, share my views here with the, such a learned uh, panel. Uh, it is I am fortunate enough to share my views here and learn from my co-panelists uh, at the same time. Uh, you know, uh, coming to Union Budget first of all to talk about so Union Union Budget 22 was one of the most important events before the state election of 22 because it was anticipated this budget was going to be more populist uh, by most of them the market uh, before uh, before the budget shown also their apprehension and there was decline in the market for a good amount of 10 days fis were selling their position and they at the same time were hedging uh, you know hedging their position so there was a dilemma there was a confusion in the market before the budget so apparently the budget was not prepared on the populist measure by the government and has sent a great roadmap with a vision of next 25 years. I've never seen any budget which has been, uh, you know, shared with a vision. It, it was always with the actionables of past and actionable uh, actionables for the current year or maybe the at max at the next, uh, next, uh, next few years. So for the first time, it's been uh, seen where the government is talking about next decade, next 25 years. Uh, so it is a vision for 25 years to be laid down. And I believe that it was a very bold budget in the sense that government has actually reduced the subsidies. I've never seen any government talking about subsidies, you know. So uh, government talk, reducing the subsidies, especially before getting into the state elections, that too not one, that to the bigger one, which actually laid down the foundation of the national elections. Reducing subsidies and increasing the capex. So these are what two different things which uh, which you find that one is government is reducing the subsidies. Second thing is government is increasing increasing the capex by thirty five percent. Is a great long term growth move. India's growth estimate to be at nine point two nine point two percent, highest among the all large economies. So uh, you know I'm not getting into too detail uh, in terms of I'm just picking up the few key takeaways which can help us to set up a perspective uh, for the larger audience. So what 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 went right? I'll see, uh, you know, virtual digital assets are to be taxed at 30% and no set off is allowed on losses. Along with that, there'll be 1% TDS on payment made on digital asset transfer. There, there was a lot of ambiguity and doubts on, and there was no clarity on, uh, you know, how the virtual assets were, will be taken, uh, you know, will be taken care. Because a lot of retail participation as well was there in terms of digital assets. So there is some clarity. They still, uh, you know, still these are not legal tendered assets because there is no financial, uh, fin uh, you know, finance bill on and around. But still, there is one clarity at least that there is no illegal, and people are pay by paying tax. At least they can uh, account for the profits which is being generated by the digital assets. In short, from the cryptocurrency gain, the one make uh, profits can be taxed at the thirty percent, and that will reduce the cryptocurrency mania, with which I normally, you know, uh, call it. That it is not legal tender yet, but was clarified by the finance minister at the post budget conference. So we, for uh, investors, still need to uh, you know wait for as far as uh, uh, how it will be uh, considered post budget uh, post uh, you know finance bill comes. Record 1.4 lakh crore of GST has been collected in January 22. This is also an especially finance minister talking about taking a pause. Uh, and mentioning that this is the record collection. So that is also one of the encouraging numbers, which has been seen introduction of India's own central bank, digital, uh, you know, digital currency, CBDC. Now this is very one unique move, which has come when every, uh, you know, when we have seen the record growth of cryptos currencies are taking place. India's move of uh, coming up with the own CBDC. It will be, though it will be too early and naive to comment on lot upon on the topic because, because the devil lies in the detail. And the details are, aren't out yet. It is a basic, basic detail, which has been shared, but this surely means that there will be appropriate checks and balances with appropriate monitoring by authorities. Unlike what's happening now, the benefits, well, the cost of transacting, printing and lending will reduce and lead to more financial inclusion. Another point, which I like most was MSMEs are crucial for the economies to grow and hence the credit guarantee trust 
to grow the uh, to grow and enhance the capital credit guarantee trust for micro and small enterprises scheme will be revamped with the required infusion of funds this will facilitate <clears throat> additional credit of 2 trillion for micro and small <clears throat> uh, enterprise we think this will boost the msme industry for micro and small uh, enterprise the scheme will, will be revamped and required infusion of funds this will facilitate another credit of 2 for uh, <clears throat> and uh, post that i'll just give no oh, sure yeah we are all hoping it's only a water sunday yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> actually i i, I uh, faced covid in my first phase itself so post that okay. uh, it was uh, god god was kind enough that uh, i again didn't fall uh, that but stay safe stay healthy yeah yeah all right The government has given a reasonable target of disinvestment for the coming year back to sixty-five thousand crores, and hence the, we think the LIC IPO should come by the March this year. Outlay for capital expenditure has been increased by thirty-five percent from five point five million in the current year to seven point five in the twenty-two twenty-three. We believe that this is a very positive for all the lenders in the banking and NBFC space. A whopping increase of thirty-five percent in uh, capital expenditure. One thing that was implied from the budget was growth in the. End- Indian economy in macro perspective, and a focus on spending and revival, with the PM Gati Shakti, and the focus is on increasing investments in road, railways, airport, port, mass transport, waterways, and logistic infrastructure. National highways network with expanded by twenty five thousand kilometers in twenty two twenty three, up to five x compared to average five five years ago. There is a huge scope for infrastructure companies in India. There has been a big EV push. in the budget with a battery swapping policy to be brought out uh, soon this will focus on interoperability standardization of battery and charging interface of the batteries mm-hmm. with the renewal sources of energies in mind the government has planned to increase solar capacity to 280 uh, megawatt to, to uh, by to, uh, 2030 the finance minister mentioned that government will make 400 new vande mataram vande bharat trains in the next 3 years With railway capex rising 39% year on year, a big boost to railway sector. Special focus on mental health and social welfare. One of the key takeaways: National Tele Mental Health Program, soon to be launched. Though mental health has taken severe hit post COVID-19, and hence this needed uh, uh, this indeed was needed as a welcome welcome move for great cause of society. The FM also mentioned making a national digital health ecosystem. so these are uh, you know initiatives to be announced lot more clarity is needed but these are the in right direction uh, uh, for the society the jal jeevan mission which has been largely successful till now as the department of drinking water and sanitation now targets installing infrastructure in 3.8 crores household by 2223 fm also mentioned that government is looking for 5g option soon and higher trust on laying optic fiber cables in village under the uh, bharat net project another big move which i uh, see is budget was the uh, for the defense sector with a make in india initiative the government has decided to give higher preference for domestic defense companies 60% of the defense budget would be the spend on domestic requirement one thing which i found was uh, uh, and i think most of us was expecting on uh, in the line of ltcg and stt the security transaction tax was introduced during 2004 at the same time the long term capital tax uh, gain tax was removed and stt ltcg never coexisted however in 2018 ltcg was introduced without removing the stt therefore there was an expectation either uh, the reduction of removal of stt or ltcg as the middle class and the lower middle class who have not, now started investing heavily in equity oriented instrument so this was a uh, you know huge expectation i think which was <clears throat> which got ignored some of the area which i feel can be you know uh, can other uh, can be benefited as duty concession be, being given to promote electronic manufacturing wearable devices mobile phone uh, parts and cameras custom duty on cut and polish diamonds gems to reduce 5% custom duty on imitation jewelry these are a few other initiatives but if i give my concluding my, uh, remarks i would like to say that it's a very progressive and forward looking budget and it prepares india for next stage of sustained growth it is a continuation of the last year's budget it real highlight of the budget is huge expansion of the capital expenditure the budget is set for a road map for sustained sustainable economic recovery banking and 
on infrastructure development and agriculture reform. It has also proposed measures for comprehensive economic development across region. All these measures will definitely boost cons consumer sentiments. And if this happens, it, it, capital market is directly uh, you know, proportionate to the effect of this, uh, these initiatives. And I see no reason why the capital market in the coming years will, will, has all the opportunity to multi-fold growth from here on. So with this, uh, love, these are the, uh, the few points which I could see, uh, you know, which can have very uh, big impact on uh, Indian economy. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Sandeep. As always, very crisp and, uh, you know, very objective oriented. So I think, uh, you know, great, you know, we got a lot of insight and especially from, as you rightly said, from the capital markets and what it means, uh, all these steps that have been taken to be, to have more and more industry developed in India, either through the defense way or MSME and, uh, and these things really was uh, very insightful. Thanks a lot, Sandeep. Uh, with that, I will move to our next panelist. Uh, before I move to the next panelist, there is always the say that says that details, you know, devils lies in the details or the fine print. So our next panelist is somebody who probably can throw some light on, on that aspect, especially the IBC opening up for cross-border resolution, the, you know, all the surety bonds, which will have a big impact on the infra contracts plus the insurance capital markets, you know, insurance companies are listed as well and how they will be stack up against, again, against other creators in case there is a default. So all these things are, uh, it's still, uh, un, you know, getting, getting unraveled, but, uh, while it's happening, I will, what I would like to invite Mr. Gupta, the advisor for extra zero legal services, uh, to give you, to give his perspective on impact. Uh, over to you, Mr. Gupta. Mr. Gupta, can you hear us? Yeah, thank you. Uh, All yours. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, very respected uh, Rajura ji, S.C. Agarwal sahab, uh, the Chairman, Loveji, and all my colleagues, uh, the co-chair and all the other colleagues who are the, uh, participating as a panelist, and uh, all the viewers, a very good evening to all of you. And uh, uh, I, this is a privilege for me to be participating in this uh, particular event organized by the SOHM. Uh, as a, uh, love, uh, uh, the Chairman and all my colleagues, as the uh, yourself and uh, S.C. Agarwal sahab mentioned, and including Sandeep ji, that uh, the budget was welcomed by the stock market. We can see that uh, there was a good response from the stock market. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, as you rightly mentioned, that the capital market is growing. We are going to become the fifth largest market market cap when we are talking about that the overtaking uh, by the, uh, we are overtaking the UK. Including S.C. Agarwal sahab also mentioned uh, the similar, uh, shared the similar sentiments uh, through his address. Now, when we are discussing all these things, uh, I agree with that, that we are, uh, this budget is uh, welcome. Uh, but uh, when we uh, speak that the impact of the budget vis-a-vis -vis the capital market and in uh, general per se, it's very important that uh, we should be also discussing about the checks and balances because the growth which we are talking about will not be uniform. So the budget also give a hint that uh, we are gradually and gradually we have to adopt the climate change and there will be the uh, parallel impact of the climate change when we talk about that is on the capital market as well. So as you are aware that uh, I am a little bit into the ESG aspect and uh, there are various announcements. So what I'm trying to convey that uh, when uh, we see the capital market, the capital market talks about the availability of the funds how the market attraction will be there and how uh, like uh, the more and more investments will be there. Now, when we see the budget and the, uh, the COP26, the commitment given by the Honorable Prime Minister and even by the other nations. So it's very important that uh, maybe in the short run that, uh, that there will be a uniform uh, growth in the capital market. But in the times to come, I feel that there will be the certain specific sector, the specific certain industry which will have a very, uh, I will say, the major impact of the adoption of the climate-related aspect. When I'm saying this, uh, as I mentioned you, that uh, there will be, uh, 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 I just uh, note, uh, listed down the five aspects which we should be discussing when we are discussing about the capital market and the impact of the budget uh, on a macro level is one of a, uh, about the availability of the funds. So we should be discussing that how the availability of the funds vis-a-vis 
the compliance of the climate related whether it's the esg we'll say or a brsr but how it will behave that's something we should be discussing uh, through this forum uh, which is the sohm and the uh, committee then the market attraction the fundamental strength of the balance sheets because that's very very important that when we are saying may it be the lic or the railway because i remain the consultant for the indian railway and when you are talking about that the uh, capital intensive uh, like uh, the contribution of the capital market i am aware about the fundamental strength of the other side of the things that okay the how the actuarial valuations and the liabilities are there that's very very important that should be discuss somebody discussing may it be the lic or may it be the other side of the things uh, the another one is the cost of implementations because now what will happen that uh, with the advent of the esg requirement the climate change requirement lot of investments will be required uh, when the companies have to uh, give a, uh, impetus impetus to the uh, those kind of investments may it be the carbon may it be the otherwise otherwise there will be not be a survive there will be a survival issue for them so it's very important that we will be discussing and in that backdrop i just wish to share with you few important developments in this budget that how this budget uh, uh, try to convey that message to everybody whether like uh, the capital market is there or a sector specific so i am speaking on the both the sides the first one when we talk about the climate finance they discuss that there will be the issue of the sovereign green bonds uh, to mobilize the resources for the green infrastructure uh, so uh, they talk about that uh, they will th these will be deployed in the public sector projects uh, for the reducing the carbon intensity so i believe that uh, in a way but i am trying to convey that there will be the more thrust which will be more uh, attraction will be available towards the uh, as uh, towards the industry which are into the uh, green project side rather than the uh, in general per se so the capital market will behave in that particular direction same way uh, that they talk about the climate action focus funds that they they will be looking for and even they have allocated 19500 crores to boost the domestic solar power manufacturing so sandeep ji also mentioned about and the agarwal saab saab also mentioned about the uh, battery switching and all these things but uh, uh, there is a thrust that the 19500 crore is being given to the solar uh, power manufacturing aspect uh, they talk about they also talk about the sustainable and climate finance through the gift city you are aware that the when we talk about the gift city it's uh, practically a different uh, world that that with different uh, uh, jurisdiction all together so how the funds will be coming over there and how they will be uh, made available to the indian industry that's something very interesting and i believe that will be a, there should be a deliberation around that then they talk about the circular economy as well that how we will be uh, doing the uh, waste management the promoting the reuse of the raw material the technologies around that the r and d inno innovation and so and so uh, they talk, also talk about the uh, this net zero goals uh, that how the net zero goals and what are the initiative around that i am not touching because we have a limited time so i am just uh, uh, giving a macro uh, aspect uh, related to the uh, 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 the impact areas where there will be a impact uh, aspect will be there uh, the vande bharat train uh, asandeep ji discussed about that so i am not touching upon uh, but just to share with you that uh, uh, the highways that uh, the additional 12000 km national highways planned for the next uh, year the financial year the next financial year it's uh, something which will impact the capital market and then uh, uh, they talk about the uh, uh, financial inclusion uh, by uh, bringing 100% post office on the core banking system vis a vis the 75 digital banking units in 75 districts which are being uh, given the responsibility given to the scheduled commercial banks so uh, these are the few initiatives which i discussed I, there are number of things which we can discuss but just i try to emphasize uh, once again on the aspect that yes there is a buoyancy in the capital market we are, we um, i am totally agree with the agarwal saab and love because you are the experts that the market will touch the nifty will touch this level or the bsc sensex will, uh, will touch that level but again it's very important on the part of the sohm to give a view to the industry that okay it's not a case that okay everybody will grow because there will be the compelling factors that okay maybe it be the climate may it be the fundamentals of the financial statement balance sheets that will also is very very important that should be discussed that should be discussed and deliberated so that the uh, the uh, the uh, entire industry should understand this uh, aspect otherwise what will happen it will be a loop sided development it will not be a development which we are looking for uh, developed country means that everything is getting developed so it's very important that it should be deliberated that okay this is something is going to impact negatively as well um, i'm not saying that the green bonds or the climate will have a negative impact because it's important for the society 
but for the certain industries say for example the tobacco industry is there or some uh, oil sector is there or some gas sector is there they will have a different kind of impact and how the hydrogen gas and other things are emerging and what kind of investment which is required i just wish to uh, close my deliberation over here when the sandeep ji and other colleagues talk about the defense because we are all discussing about the defense but one thing is very important which is missed i believe that we should be discussing that when we are saying the 75% will be the domestic product, uh, procurement but what is happening i love the i just wish to share with you and i request each one of you to raise this aspect that when we are saying the defense production what is happening that the we don't have the defense uh, testing labs available so first of you all you have to create the lab system available over here certification agency over here because what is happening that if you are even if i'm aware about the oil sector and the other sectors you have to get tested your equipments you have to spend a crores and crores of rupees outside india to send your data send your information send your parts for the purpose of the testing so that you will be able to manufacture that not only we are incurring the we are sending the foreign exchange over there but also you are giving your sensitive information to the outside body when you are giving the uh, for the sending for the testing purpose so it's again it's very very important that uh, uh, offering uh, giving a, a figure in the budget or saying that okay this will be there first of all we should see the fundamentals whether it's a financial manager because i am from a, 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 a this background of a chartered accountant that's why i'm speaking about the fundamentals of the balance sheets that's one important the another is the fundamental of the infrastructure as well so that's very very important based on that only these kind of investments can flourish not only india but also to the capital market over to you lovely for giving me thanks for giving me the opportunity uh, thank you thank you mr gupta as always um you know you have covered a lot of areas but uh, two two key things is clearly the this new world of climate change and esg um uh, interdependency with the capital market and the stock market this has this is evolving and it's going to get more and more uh dynamic and interdependent and impactful so climate change is definitely one area which will have directly indirectly all the impacts on our capital market and the way we evolve on on that and i think you raise you in a pinpoint at a very 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 you know pertinent point on why what we are doing with the defense sector uh and getting more and more production capabilities within india which is good hopefully the back end infrastructure which require to develop the quality because at the end of the day it is about protecting our borders so we need to ensure that we are we are you know um creating those back end infrastructures from lab labs and certification agency and those things which are required to be world class in the defense products very pertinent point thank you so much mr gupta with this i will probably go over to the next panelist and next panelist obviously uh, we would all be very curious to know what uh, you know what's view what's what's his view on the fed policy the central bank policy the macro factors inflation yields and how these things are in and or the ratings as well from for that matter and how these they, these macro factors will probably have a larger impact on the capital markets and the overall economy over to mr sapnavis what do you say Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Chaturvedi, and thanks a lot to Asacham for having me out here. I think I mentioned somewhere in between that the devil lies in the details. So I think, as an economist, we always tend to have a rather perverse view of things. So even when it's bright and sunny, we are able to somehow we see the darkness somewhere or the other. Uh, well, on this on a lighter side, but uh, I do believe that this particular budget, as everybody has said, is definitely a very uh, good budget because. it's a growth oriented budget anything on in any focus on infrastructure means things have to be good and we as economists have always been saying that uh, the government should be spending more on capital on projects and that's exactly what the government has done so i don't think anybody can have a quarrel on it but the important thing when we look at uh, the capital expenditure of the government how high is it actually and how effective is it going to be see one thing is that Uh, we are hopping on this 35% growth but that is because we're comparing it over the budgeted number of uh, 2122 you compare over what has actually happened in uh, 2122 the revised number it's around 25% it's still a good increase of around 1 and 1/2 lakh crores because from 6 to 7 and 1/2 lakh crores is a good enough um, number so i think that definitely is a positive now i think there was an interesting observation made by one of the panelists i think sandeep had said this that we have cut down on subsidies in a very bold move 
Now, just to put this in perspective, to my mind, uh, the subsidy went up earlier because there were a lot of uh, free food, free relief, which was given. So that's how the food subsidy had gone up in the last two years. So the government is not actually cutting down on subsidy. It only means that the special relief given both in terms of fertilizer subsidy as well as subsidy, which was done in 21 as well as 22 on account of the pandemic, they have been rolled back. So in a way, I would not say that the government is uh, going back on a subsidy. It's just that there are certain programs which were COVID based, which were implemented on a large scale and a very successful scale. These are the things which have um, actually been rolled back. Now, even this capital expenditure, I think uh, lots of us may be overstating the importance of the seven and a half lakh crores. Okay, because we should remember that government expenditure is one bit an important part definitely because it normally does kickstart investment in the economy, but it's one part of the overall investment which is taking place. So just to give you a perspective, today we're talking of our GDP likely to go towards 258, 260 lakh crores next year. Uh, normally our capital formation would be best rate, maybe 28, 29%. So I'm talking of around 70, 75 lakh crores of uh, capital formation which is taking place. And if I juxtapose the seven and a half lakh crores, it's around 10% of capital formation. So I think it's actually left to all the members of SHM. I mean, they are the ones who have to actually bring about the investment cycle rolling. The government is only sort of giving that good nudge. It's been doing it relentlessly for the last couple of years, but the central government has can do only that much. Okay, so we should not overstate saying that merely because we are jumping from six to seven and a half lakh crores, great things are going to happen. We need the private investment cycle to be to, to, to recommence. And for that, there are two things which have to happen. A, they have to get more involved in infrastructure. And B, as economists always say, that once the government starts, the private sector follows. Now, the government has been doing it for the last couple of years, but the private sector has not followed. So evidently, earlier, I mean, there was an explanation saying that, look, we want to borrow money. Banks don't want to lend because they have an NPA problem. And most of them were in the infrastructure-related areas. But today, I think the NPA issue is really behind us. So we can really start from a clean slate. And I think this is a time when the private sector will have to get actively involved in infrastructure. Second, investment comes when we have a good utilization of capacity. So I think that's the problem we have that the capacity utilization rates in India are fairly low. It's well below 70%. Typically we say 78, 80% is when a particular company or a particular industry goes in for fresh investment. I'm not saying that investment is not taking place. You look at the steel sector, I think they are over 100% capacity utilization. There's a large amount of investment taking place. But we need to see more broad-based capacity, uh, capacity utilization rates improve before we see higher investment coming into the manufacturing sector. So actually the thing is that the government has sort of started the race well. The basin has to be passed on to the private sector, uh, sector. The private sector has to take it and there has to be acceleration which has taken place. And to my mind, I'm not too gung-ho about this happening in 22-23. We may see certain signs of it, certain traces in certain industries, like say pharmaceuticals, cement, metals. But will I see it in the consumer or durable space? The answer is no. Will I see it in capital goods in a large thing? Probably not yet at this point of time, because I think we have the same problem, which I don't want to get into because it's not a budget-related issue, that are we creating enough jobs? Because I need to create more jobs, more income, more spending, better capacity utilization, more investment. I mean, that's how the chain really works. But that's a different issue. Now, again, as economists, we tend to be a bit worried about this entire fiscal deficit. Yes, 6.4% is a very good number, but it means a total borrowing of 16.1 lakh crores or so, of which market borrowings are going to be around 15 lakh crores. Now, what does this really mean? We're going to have the third successive years of large borrowings in the market. And I think the market has gotten very spooked up because of this. You know, the, when, the prime, when the finance minister started the speech, 10-year bond was 6.66, by the time she ended 6.86. And I think today that 6.95 probably ended at 6.90. So we're going to see a lot of volatility in the market because the market is suspicious of this government borrowing, they're suspicious of inflation. And when I talk about inflation, an interesting part is that the budget doesn't take into account the crude oil problem which is there, okay? Because we're assuming that I've withdrawn the fertilizer subsidy, I've kept the fuel subsidy low, it was anyway hardly anything substantial, but there's been no mention made about uh, uh, crude oil price because I think crude oil price is a problem for us, it's a nuisance because it's already led to very high inflation in India. And this is something which could get spooked up even further because people are talking of $120 per barrel. Today, I think it probably came down slightly below 90. The new year hasn't yet started, so we still have hope that maybe something will happen 
there'll be greater flows of supplies and the prices will moderate. But I think this could be a nasty factor going ahead because what will the government do? Because if you look at the excise collections, it's actually dipping this year compared to last year. It, that's probably also because of the 10 rupee, uh, which was cut for both petrol and diesel in November. Maybe that's the reason it's down. Has the government actually buffered in anything? What will have to be done in case crude oil price remains above $100 per barrel? And that would in turn, of course, mean that uh, uh, they'll have to take some action. We, we, we are quite happy today paying 110 rupees for petrol. Maybe we'll have to pay 120, 130. One doesn't know how that's going to work. The long and short of this is this high fiscal deficit also means that uh, the Reserve Bank next week will have to take a more definitive call. Because so far, the Reserve Bank of India has been saying that, look, growth doesn't seem to be durable. And uh, but the economic survey, the government in the budget, they feel that growth is very much durable and it's only the upward path which is there. And the RBI so far said, look, growth is not durable. Inflation is high, but it's still manageable at 5%. But we believe that inflation will remain in the 5 to 6% range because we've already seen that the higher raw material costs have been passed on by most of the producers. Even my toothpaste has become more expensive now. My shaving cream has become more expensive. I think most of the companies have had sort of taken in the, the higher cost of raw materials and, take, and their profits have been affected. But now I think there is a lot of correction taking place. So I see a lot of inflation potential. So it'll be interesting to see how the RBI response is already this issue of saying that there's surplus liquidity in the system. They were talking of normalization. And now do, how do you normalize now when you know that the government is going to borrow nearly 15 lakh crores, cross borrowing. Of course, net is around 11 lakh crores. So this will be something which we will all be watching to see as to what the RBI is going to do. And I think that will be the sort of final part of the budget because we have, the budget says, okay, we are on the fiscal part. There's going to be large borrowing. We're spending a lot of capital. Growth will take place to the extent that the government can contribute to it. And now it's left for the monetary arm to try and make sure that we have the right approach to ensure that even the households are protected because inflation is high, real interest rates are now in the negative region. So those are the issues which will be grappling the MPC when they meet, and that's something which we'll have. But just a couple of other issues which I thought are interesting ones, and uh, one of them, of course, is the one on uh, cryptocurrency taxing. I think that's a very good move. Uh, though it le leads to very confusing signals because I still believe that crypto is nothing else but pure gambling, 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 okay? There is no underlying and you just gamble. I start my own currency called Subnovis currency. All of you out here on the panel are nice to me. You start trading in my in, in Subnovis currency, money is made. Now, is this a legal thing? Look, if the government is taxing it, I suppose it has to be legal. So I think the government has given some kind of clarity. So notwithstanding my own uh, prejudice or very extreme bias against uh, cryptos, but I think it is good that this message has gone around saying that we are going to tax the gains. It'll, it's going to be analogous to uh, gambling. I think horse races also have a 30% rate, uh, rate. So that's one, one thing. Now, I think a lot of people get confusing the crypto part with the CBDC. Okay, because, because when you're talking of a digital currency, it's a digital rupee. So what we're doing today through a UPI or NEFT or RTGS is going to be is nothing else but a digital rupee actually. So trying to say that the CBDC is actually justifies the existence, the legitimacy of crypto is slightly wrong because crypto is something which is traded. A, a, a digital rupee will not be traded. Okay, it's, instead of keeping 10 rupees in my car, in my pocket, I have 10 rupees in an account of the RBI or however it's stated. But I think the CBDC is going to, I mean, logically as, as it develops, I think the banking system is something which will have to look very closely at it because we're actually substituting my savings bank account, my current account, with the digital currencies and overall uh, concept of saying that should I be having so many people in a bank itself could get questioned at some point of time as and when the CBDC. Uh, but I think lots of, I think 24, 25 central banks are already working on the CBDC and it now has to be accepted as more or less a reality. The last thing which I wanted to touch on is the sovereign uh, green bond which the government is talking of. Even this would be interesting because uh, who normally issues a green bond? If the government is going to issue a green bond, it will probably be meaning to finance certain green projects. So some of the infrastructure projects, the seven and a half lakh crores we're talking of, would probably have to qualify. Who's going to qualify? Who's going to certify saying that these are green projects? I think that's something which we need to have the back end ready, the logistics to be ready. Do we believe in the rating agencies? Can the rating agency actually be in a position Incidentally, I don't work for a rating agency now. I'm with Bank of Baroda. So I can say that does a rating agency have the competence to know about environment? Do you need scientists to do it? I mean, these are the issues which are going to come up because the central government is going to start issuing bonds based on uh, the so-called green, the, the green thing. Second thing, who's going to, who's going to invest in it? <clears throat> okay, what is going to be the cost of it? 
is it going to be higher priced or lower priced than the regular security? So if I have it, uh, a green bond, is it will it go at 6.85 or will it go at 7.15? Will it go at 6.50? And who should be holding on to it? So normally when you talk of these green bonds, I think they will have to be issued outside India. If I issue it in the form of masala bonds, probably they may not be too much of interest. If it's going to be a dollar bond, and I think the other sets of complications for the Indian government, because the moment you do it, S&P, Moody's and Fitch, they're going to guide what our policies are going to be like. So I think these are all interesting developments, crypto, CBDC, as well as the sovereign bond. And uh, we'll see how they really evolve, and then we'll know what kind of direction they are, they are headed. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Sabnavis. That was a very insightful, very detailed, um, especially a couple of areas which I kind of gathered, uh, which is which is very, very critical, is, as you rightly mentioned, is how much of the capital formation is happening due to this capital expenditure. And if it's, it has to be meaningful for the jobs to be created and, and economy to, to really propel, and that's something that we'll keep an eye upon. Uh, clearly, you mentioned about the capacity utilization. Hopefully, they, uh, you know, we will improvise on on that ground. Crude oil did not get spoke about at all, but plays big role in whatever we do here in India, and we'll keep an eye on that because that adds to the overall inflationary uh, pressure and the volatility in the yield market that has already started kicking in. And we'll have just have to see how far and where it goes, um, especially uh, when we when we are a net borrower, and especially we'll see if 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 India, uh, you know, if we make up uh, if we if we make it to the global bond indices based upon few things over the period of time, then the yield and the inflation will probably have the bigger role to play there as well. Uh, lastly, clearly on the on the crypto side, you're absolutely right that there is no reason that. If we should use a terminology as such as cryptocurrency, it is crypto, is it a digital assets? And we just see what path the government and the regulator take to you know to legitimize that. Uh, but in the at, at least at, at least it is we now being taxed, and we'll see how it evolves, how that space evolves. So you know a lot of areas you covered, and thank you so much for very insightful. I will now move on to the next um, panelist, Miss Vora, who is a managing director of Prabhudas Liladhar. Uh, Ma'am, uh, we heard our fellow panelists on the various areas. Now, on one side, we have heard about all the challenges uh, that are you know, grappling us at this point of time, be it a capital formation, be it the volatility in the bond market, inflation uh, with the digital currency, uh, jobs, uh, whether the you know this capex is enough or how much of the private public partnership is required. In midst of all this, our capital market is very buoyant and it's going to be upward going in the near term, as we heard from the panelists as well. Now, how are these two converging and what's your view on that overall? Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. First of all, good evening, everybody on the panel and all the viewers. I'm really pleased to be here with all of you. I think uh, a lot of predecessors spoke about what is really good that has happened in the budget. And I also personally believe that definitely this was a visionary budget. And most of us, while we run our own organizations, we craft a vision so that everybody knows the direction that we want to take. So in terms of vision crafting for our nation, as India at 100, I think they've done a marvelous job. And it's very, very important to give a message to all the millennials, the young, as well as the FII, FDI globally, that India is embarrassing, not only the technology, clean energy, and everything that is here and future. So from that perspective, I think in a very limited and short time, all the relevant topics were covered and shown a pathway. I'm very sure nothing in our small organizations also we can do in very short time. So when we want to change the gears of a nation, it's a long time that we take, but we set the direction. And I think the direction is set very well. Having said that, so in uh, last two years budget itself, we found that there was a 360 degree change in approach and approach in terms of being fiscally more accommodative to support growth. And in the first budget, which was the COVID budget itself, they kept a very long run of till 25, 26, 
to bring the deficit down to four and a half percent. Having given that message, I agree that we are on the right path. We have consolidated a bit. But when I see this 6.4% as a target of fiscal deficit, matlab ki India ka ghar chalane ke liye, what is our income and how much more we want to spend and how much we are going to borrow in the light of the fact that globally, from here on, liquidity just cannot increase. It can only come down. Interest rate cannot come down, but only increase. When we see these two, conjunction of these two global facts, I feel that A, this fiscal deficit target is very bold. And at a time when RBI will be left with no choice but to increase rate, both because it's going to go up globally as also the inflation pressure, this extra borrowing is going to put a little more pressure on bond yields than expected. And markets, probably bond markets, are going in that direction. Second point, apart from all the positives, which I also agree that uh, my predecessors explained, I think what we are seeing, not only this festive season, but after that, say in December and January also, if you see automobile numbers, they have been YOY down. It's not flat, they are down. And which and not only for automobile, it's been down for steel, cement, automobile, and some of the consumer du durables, but we don't get the numbers. Which means that somewhere because of inflation and the K-shaped recovery which is happening in the economy, where large is becoming larger, but the lower part is taking a little more time to come back. In that scenario, a little more fillip to consumption was also due. So that while the corporate animal spirit is bouncing back or we are expecting it to bounce back because of PLI, clean balance sheets of the banks, clean balance sheet of corporates, but the real trigger for that to happen is the consumption and demand. And I think that when we are so comfortably placed in budget with the rising revenue growth, a bit more could have been probably done there to get that kickstart. Lastly, I also feel that the way I feel the vision crafting was phenomenal. Putting to shame some of the best of the MNC or domestic corporates in terms of vision crafting and detailing. I also feel that they have adopted a strategy to underpromise and overperform, which is what we saw happening in last time's budget also. When the revenue growth numbers have substantially surpassed most of the target numbers, if you see whether it is corporate tax, direct tax, of course, GST, and which is what gave a leeway to them to give a little excise relief for petrol and diesel. I think even this year, if the economic survey says that our growth will be 8.5%, we all see inflation at nothing less than 4 to 5 percent and that's conservative. The real GDP growth will be 12 and a half to 13 percent. But we see that the tax revenue growth is assumed at 11 percent. So I think that that's a conservative number and most likely it will overshoot in turn giving comfort to the fiscal deficit target. When we see divestment, which is also a very big avenue, consistently year after year, government was, I think, underperforming. But as what one of the predecessors says that nothing less than 15 lakh crore could be the valuation of LIC. And if I divest 5%, it's 75,000 crore. If you divest 10%, it's 1 lakh 50,000 crore. So the total receipt taken in these two years, uh, 22 and 23, is just 1 lakh 50,000 crores. So it's not that whatever has happened worth about 20, 25,000 crores, Air India, this, that, uh, and a few in pipeline, whether Concord or something will not happen. So I feel both, whether revenue or tax receipts, as well as divestment receipts, mostly are conservative and leaves a room to maneuver either for as what, uh, you know, oil-related little crisis which can hurt our consumption, or 
be better in terms of fiscal deficit consolidation path. So with this uh, being from the market, I will also quickly round up on how I see markets. Uh, you know, while I totally agree that India, this is India's decade, and we will continue to rule in terms of growth, being the highest growing economy in the world. But when we were not so in last two years, or when the economy was not doing so well in last two years, markets did exceedingly well. So to completely correlate uh, economic growth or profit growth in a very linear way to market growth and price growth is, we all know, not correct. So we are sitting on a very large global asset inflation because of large, uh, almost doubling of the Fed balance sheet. When we gradually unwind, I foresee that A, the economic growth of India will continue to improve and also the quality of growth. But not necessarily we will re-rate from here. And because of that, I feel this year could be looking at the way the uh, markets have done in last one and a half years and particularly last one year. I think this year will be a moderate gain year at base, best, and it could be pretty volatile also. So one needs to really brace up for that. Whenever interest rate goes up, most of the people from the markets and economics know that the P works in inverse relation to the yields. And with rising yields, the NASDAQ or any of some of these large cap companies where long cash flows, long period cash flows are discounted at a very low interest rate, they definitely get impacted in terms of their current pricing. And we are seeing the starting of some of those things happening. And we'll have to remain watchful how it pans out. In conclusion, economic growth will be better. Nifty earnings will be good. But valuation re-rating, I don't see much scope for one year for sure. Best is consolidation. And we should be braced up for a little more volatility. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Very again, very insightful. You covered a lot of areas. Um, completely agree with you that uh, you know there would be um, that you did mention about uh, PE factor and PE and the and the yield are the inverse correlated. And it just that one more factor that may play in that variable is the growth. And that growth will then determine how much of the value uh, moderation may be in place along with the along with the volatility. So that's something is to keep an eye for. Completely agree. You did raise a very very important point on liquidity, uh, which is the most important for capital market. That is that is it's all about liquidity in our markets anyway. So we have to see how that is going to pan out. As you mentioned, with the K-shaped kind of recovery, a bit on consumption focus would have would have probably helped and I completely agree that probably it may have evened out a bit um, you know yeah, they'll always mange more so there's always more that could have been done that's how it should be and on the overall market I you know I did hear you and that's a lot of um, you know conversations happen around whether market have run up a lot uh, usually market is an is is a reflection of the real economy now it's about time the real economy reflect the in market and get actually real so that all this inflationary pressure and the issues can be subdued to an extent that it remains within the uh, intolerance appetite and not go beyond our control for some drastic measures to be taken which has an impact on the capital market directly indirectly both so very insightful ma'am thank you so much uh, with that i i move on to the uh, next panelist um, before I go to the next panelist, obviously, um, you know, uh, I, I uh, Mr. Agarwal is uh, Mr. Agarwal is one of my favorite. Uh, we always look forward for his views and his very straightforward um, the comments on few of the things. Um, sir, with overall, with with where, uh, with all the uh, inputs or the feedback that has been provided, the view that has been provided so far. It seems to be that how you know jury is kind of out on on the volatility, on the moderate versus the bullish, on the yield and other K factor and the liquidity and other climate change and other factors where jury seems to be um, have an opinion in different directions. 
but with the same view that the economy is here to grow and uh, you know uh, and uh, prospects are bright overall in that context sir over to you for for your inputs and your view mr garwal i must thank ashachem respected love chaturvedi ji senior managing committee member shri sc agarwal ji shri narendra vadwa ji and all other esteemed panelists and great industry experts who have joined us in our effort to understand the impact of uh, this budget on our capital markets in the coming time so I, i certainly you know a lot has been discussed i certainly feel that modern mobility and clean energy stocks related to this area should likely to go up as soon as they bring in some product innovations i also feel industrial infrastructure psu financial real estate capital goods and infrastructure particularly these sectors uh, analyst would these sectors would become the favorite of analyst especially after the uh, uh, speech by our honorable finance minister which is only not forward looking but incorporates the traditional economic theory given by wagner which said public spending must be increased tremendously for an exponential growth and reduction in unemployment so these are the two challenges which has been faced at the same time she has uh, uh, by not increasing the disposable income in the hands of people she has made her mark on not improve, increasing the inflation so she has tried to you know like uh, i'm i if i am permitted to uh, to like with multiple hands like in indian goddesses try to handle multiple economic issues with a single budget and i thank madam for this uh, amrit kal budget what we say for investors who are listening buy on dips i am very positive of the market and i do feel that the large caps are likely to outperform the mid and the small caps all these um, are my personal view and none of the institutions whether it is iif or ashchem it is of any of them i do feel banking financial sector is going to increase cement and metal sector is going to increase and normally we say focus on value but i think a barbell or a momentum strategy on focusing on growth related stocks would pay i also feel this continuous fed, fed tapering and the increase of the yield on the benchmark 10 year bond to 6.89 will bring in additional volatility giving a, a, a fall maybe a free fall also in our markets uh, similar actions by bank of england or the fed would lead to lower uh, fall in indexes but these are nothing but opportunities to buy very good thing you know it is said in taxation if nothing changes everything changes and and my all inferences is from nothing has changed much despite the fact that we made lot of recommendations personally meeting the finance minister i know the hard work done by our senior members at shm and we have making lot but rather than discussing them in very crux time i would say how this is going to affect so 35 entry is in capital expenditure almost 3% of gdp on gati shakti project is likely to bring in many industries many cheers especially the jal jeevan mission so if you are investing in companies involved in plastic pipes i do feel uh, the plastic pipe business is up for a roller coaster ride and it is going to increase also jewelry stocks uh, the duty has been cut on raw material on polished diamonds and gem stones so jewelry stocks in coming times may post better quarterly results leading to better stock market performance this is again a fundamental analysis what i am saying battery swapping policy is likely to increase the battery business in india and those stocks which are dealing in battery production may further benefit from this scheme also a production linked incentive scheme has been bought and almost 19 billion rupees will be put into this and 14 different sectors are likely to benefit from it 14 sectors so stocks which are industry leaders in these 14 sectors are likely to gain in the coming year uh, also uh, retail investors can benefit 
because there is a cap on surcharge for long term capital gain i think it will give some respite to retail investors of uh, of course a lot needs to be done uh, but yet this will be some respite also the taxing of the digital assets to the tune of 30% and also on transfer it might make equities and mutual funds more attractive to a larger set of people who are now attracted uh by the grains in crypto and also now the free fall which is being observed the panic selling and the irrational exuberance being shown in the crypto market i think equities and mutual funds may again become come in favor also shrimp aquaculture has been promoted so those companies which are long time into shrimp and such other non veg material uh, food products may also gain i also forecast a very very bright future for tv stocks you know particularly our our finance minister has said 200 televisions for education engagement i think and with the coming of a digital university there will be a big 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 push to ott and tv related stocks which i think may go for a, a booster if they get government contracts another discussion is on green bonds and blended finance i think a number of finance companies may broom up or come up as startups to 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 help psu in tap or tap this green bonds or undertake blended finance i also am very bullish about psu banks particularly after the creation of a bad bank why because all the balance sheets are now clean and now the banks can again lend to small and medium enterprises so i think in the short term in the barbell strategy focus is given that the credit is not stopped to the businessmen of the country and i think this bad bank will help us i also feel a lot of focus on purchasing in metal industry particularly 400 trains are going to be laid down a lot of need for metal will be there also the 80 lakh houses under pradhan mantri awas yojana will lead to a great need for cement steel and other ancillary industries and tap industry commodities market will also benefit when 3.8 crore taps are going to be paid aam aadmi is going to benefit from tap the the industrialists will benefit uh, from the creation of taps i think it is a win win for both i also feel all this digitalization the mechanization standardization will lead to growth of the smartphone ipad laptop industry uh, which which i think uh, are going to go grow also the uh, core banking of post offices will lead to creation of many more fintech edtech companies and i do expect it is not only the listed mark listed market that will grow i can see from the popularity of a very good show known as shark tank that we are going to see a multiple fold increase in non listed companies private equity and venture capitalist funds have invested about 5.5 lakh crore in the previous financial year and i expect it to grow to at least 7 lakh crore in the coming year that means more startups are going to come in and more, more employment opportunities are going to come and there will be more 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 opportunities for great creating greater uh, to the tune of 5x 10x returns in the unlisted space i feel manufacturing will get a major boost also the new pension scheme you know uh, to bring parity between state government employees and uh, central government employees the tax deduction limit has been increased to 14% so this additional 4% will lead to nps the, the pension funds getting more money and if they get more money more money is going to come into three sectors one is the equity sector the second is the psu uh, bond sector including psu bonds and private sector companies bonds and third is the treasury bill market so i think we have to understand the supply is being increased and of course uh, uh, demand will be of course increased i also see the benefit of custom duty cut given to companies like wearables hearables mobile phone chargers i think many companies which are involved in these will benefit and one company is coming up with an ipo 
So check out that company. It is a wearable company and it might go in for a big, uh, you know, pull towards the now. Of course, I'm not giving any names, uh, not uh, uh, desirable. Again, consultancy companies, you know, they may go up because a lot of focus is going to go on to urban planning and in urban planning, how to decongest our, our uh, main centers and make our villages more vibrant. And those companies which are involved in optical fiber networks, they are also going to grow and, and again. In private equity, I feel agri-tech and drone-based startups are likely to attract the attention of most of the industrialists, uh, particularly the new age industrialists. I also feel the pain of the small and the mid cap companies, particularly micro enterprises will be reduced, particularly by the e bill system introduced by the government and their requirement for working capital financing will go down. If the e bill system leads to automatic payment settlement. Also, with the 5G rollout and recently foreign companies investing in our telecom sector, I forecast a very bullish year for telecom sector, particularly if they roll out 5G services and the, the Google, Facebook investing in our telecom sector really shows the billion people talking together and, and feeling closer and closer to each other. I also feel DRDO, DRDO will give a big push to Indian enterprises with 68% uh, investment to go into defense purchases by Indian startups. One word of caution, while I said large caps may introduce, I have another point. FIIs may continue to have an outflow and that may make large caps, uh, particularly in which large FII investment is there, very volatile. So, so it's not all large caps will gain, but uh, uh, few. Also, I must bring out the limitation of our prime lens minister. Please understand every rupee that is being uh, uh, received, 35 paisa is borrowing. And out of the entire money going out by the government, 20 paisa is in interest. So there was little fiscal space available with our finance minister to either change the tax labs or or undertake any kind of benefits to the uh, retail individual uh, person. Also, the, if supply of uh, disposable income is increased, uh, uh, it may lead to greater inflation and greater shortages. Madam has actually done an excellent job in, in limiting inflation. Lastly, strong quarterly performance, strong profit and loss account, strong balance sheet and cash flow position, increased gross margins. These are the fundamentals that should mark, uh, mark your particular investment into the stock market. And as JP Morgan once did, I teach one case study on JP Morgan to my students. Behavioral Finance introduced that JP, it's a Harvard case study. And people talk about PE. I think they followed a strategy of using PS, price upon sales. So I think focus on the sales and always be safe. I do feel you could invest safely by using mutual fund, mutual fund route, invest in ETFs. And I would now make the landmark statement, mutual fund sahi hai is not the right thing. Sahi mutual fund sahi hai is the right thing. So be safe, not only from Corona, but also I think there was some uh, issue with uh, with the connect connectivity issue, but I think Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Garwal covered a lot of areas. Um, he did say uh, mutual fund Sahi and Sahi's mutual fund had, but the various areas that he covered uh, is beginning from the Wagner theory or the Keynesian theory, whichever way you take about you know growing your way through the spending and uh, and reducing the uh, you know, unemployment so it it comes very close to the helicopter money though it is not truly an helicopter money but that's that's the direction 
is, uh, is usually. Mr. Karwal just wanted to thank you. Sorry, there thank was you, a, some connectivity you. issue, but I was just going through summarizing that uh, from the Wagner theory or the Keynesian theory, it's very close to the helicopter money, but it's it's actually just about spending and and doing the um, you know reducing the employment and uh, and growing up and growing into um, into the GDP and the spending and and create the job. Uh, obviously, your barbell strategy is very interesting, moving out from the value base to the growth base and and going in the momentum as opposed to the value base is something which is interesting, which will be interesting for our participants. You did speak about money flowing into equity, T-bills or PSU bonds and equity, I'm assuming is through the passive uh, because that's where the pension fund usually go. And uh, lastly, on the on the bad bank or the or some of the initiative which has been taken in those areas, which definitely you know we definitely would help uh, you know propel the credit growth, which is required in addition to the investment growth for us to achieve whatever we are aspiring to achieve. You also spoke about the commodity market. And usually, whenever we speak about commodity market, we do look up to Mr. Vadwa uh, to give his views. Uh, today, due to some personal exigency, he probably has not been able to make it. So we will miss him. We definitely will uh, will try to take up on him next time uh, on on the commodity and the other aspects. But I move on to the next panelist, uh, who probably can definitely throw love, light on the ratings and and various other 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 areas that can impact the uh, capital markets. Over to you, Mr. Srinivasan. And uh, good evening, uh, everyone. We've heard this budgeting through growth and a lot of uh, capital expansion and capital expenditure being put up front. Where would the funds come? India, by and large, is a bank driven economy. So, let me, instead of repeating what my fellow panelists have said, let me give a perspective from uh, uh, you know where I look at it from a bank's perspective or a lender's uh, angle. For the first time in over 10 years, you know, public sector banks would not be getting any capital infusion by the government. On one hand, it is a good news, which means that the public sector banks are back in pink of health and they should be man able to, to manage their show on their own. We've already seen public sector banks not only raise equity, but also 81 in the last couple of quarters. These are definitely good signs. Though at the same time, one cannot but uh, think that given the ambitious plans that the government has for growth over the next couple of years, should they have announced some token capital for, for the public sector banks in this time's budget as well? Maybe the, the belief is that the financial numbers are improving and also the capital market remaining fairly buoyant. Entities should be in a position to, uh, to sort of raise capital on, on their own from the markets. Uh, general insurance companies is another area where you know they, they are a bit short on capital, so that clearly was a segment where uh, we thought there could have been some capital infusion for the second year in a row. The public sector general insurance companies do not receive any capital. Mm. But apart from capital, you know, it's that's not the only way how you strengthen banks, which in turn can kickstart or provide funds to uh, to grow the economy. The government rightfully has. Uh, laid emphasis on a lot of other measures as well. From a banking sector, we've had legacy issues related to, to wholesale assets, NPAs, most of which has been uh, resolved to the extent of cleaning up the bank's balance sheet. Recovery is still uh, yet to come in, in a lot of the cases, but clearly that's a less of a problem from a bank's balance sheet or a capitalization point of view. Government rightfully in this budget has extended the ECLGS has talked about revamping the, the CGT uh, MSC and also tweaking the IBC. All of which, you know, if implemented well, one still needs to read the, the fine prints on how these documents would come out. But given the, the thought process of the government to, to speed up uh, on, on these measures and the success that we have seen over the last 12 to 15 months on ECLGS and CGT MSC scheme, uh, we believe these would uh, help not only the underlying borrowers who have seen a lot of stress over the last 12 to 18 months, but also the lending community as such by way of quicker recovery of assets, further strengthening of their internal accruals and their ability to, to improve their risk appetite and uh, you know help the economy grow at a faster pace. Again, on an expected lines, housing remains a key focus for, for the government for FI23 as well. They've not only 
increased the revised budget estimates under the PMAY for FY22, but retained the same number for FY23 as well at about 48,000 crores. So that should give a fillip to the uh, real estate and the housing industry and consequently be a multiplier effect as well for a broader economy in place. The other important thing which uh, the, the government has said in its budget is uh, the thought process and the uh, action towards digitalization. You know, a seemingly a simple statement like we will get all the post offices under core banking. That has a huge, huge positive ramifications for the entire system. Not only does that accelerate financial inclusion and uh, ability to provide the, the uh, the individuals and the common population with with lot more financial products for for their own benefit and, and usage, but also helps banks and other uh, financial services players expand their reach. In terms of funding, uh, government has again spoken about green bonds. Uh, it, it's a interesting concept for a simple reason, like we are talking about ESG green bonds much more in the global markets as compared to to Indian markets Indian markets. It's still uh, picking up as we speak. Uh, while as uh, Madan said, you know, it's really difficult to we'll need to wait and watch and see how these green bonds are priced, who the investors are, where the investor appetite is. But uh, my view is government getting directly into it, you know, uh, could possibly set a benchmark could help set a yield curve also over there. Uh, we all know that globally there are a lot of investors who have specially green bond focused investment avenues or an ESG focused investment avenues, certain products coming from, from a government. Uh, there could definitely be much larger appetite from let's say overseas investor into these bonds and internally help setting up a, a price benchmark, not only for G6, that which is the starting point. Once you have a, a, a price benchmark or a yield uh, benchmark on GSEX, it would, over a period of time, translate into uh, a, a better yield curve or a better pricing on the, on the corporate side as well. So it, it's, it's an interesting move. If one needs to uh, add it in terms of uh, government has also been talking about innovative structures to, to fund the fiscal deficit and in, in context of its higher borrowing program, while one needs to, to see how the, the details come out, but clearly, as uh, Amisha Madam also said, at, at this point in time, we, we all see the interest rates rising. So that's clearly is a risk that one needs to, to watch out for. And in that context, the, the first steps uh, that could be taken by RBI in, in next week's monetary policy would be an important event. But, uh, but clearly, as long as the interest rate rise is uh, gradual, Everybody within the ecosystem should be able to manage it in case there is a heightened volatility. You know, that definitely has a scope to uh, to spook not only the debt markets, but also. The, the, the equity markets and consequently uh, make the entire economic recovery a bit more volatile. Uh, thanks love back to you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Mr. Srinivasan. That was a very uh, insightful, especially a couple of areas that you touched upon. Uh, very important point the public sector bank not getting any money uh, for the first time in the recent recent years. That's a big step. It definitely says a lot about the journey that has been taken. The various credit guarantee scheme, which hopefully would uh, would propel the MSME and that sector, not just from the credit perspective, but also from the job creation, especially for a country like us, who more than 50% of the job creation is either between agri or the MSME. So that I, I agree with you that that's probably one of the key area to watch out for. Housing for all, you did touch base uh, about 8 million houses that uh, that has been envisaged. Uh, will be a big, big booster of the housing sector as well. And lastly, very important point you you raise is the the importance of the calibrated approach on any policy movement would be the key on what the impact would be. The more it's priced ahead of time, the better it is for the market. The more it is not, then it brings it that much more volatility. Completely agree. Thank you so much, Mr. Srinivasan. Uh, and now I move on to um, last but not the least, the best. Mr. Joshi Pura, Dr. Joshi Pura from NMIMS uh, Associate Dean. Uh, I would request Dr. Joshi Pura to please provide your views 
on overall capital market or any sectors or anything the you know gift city was one of the areas where they have they have allowed to open uh, the education institute uh, was one of the specific measures so is nmim is interested in gift city uh, you don't have to answer that but i just thought i'll bring it up over to so, you Dr. yeah thank you love for uh, the introduction and uh, uh, i thank uh, SHM for giving me this opportunity and congratulations to the entire team for organizing this event uh, in a way there are benefits of speaking last and you know sometimes uh, you'll kind of get an opportunity to reflect on the perspective of other panelists so yep. uh, you know that i treat that as a kind of uh, benefit to me so yep. Uh, I kind of, uh, if I were to summarize this uh, budget, I would put it into three G's in a way. So it was all about growth, green, and uh, essentially we talk about uh, is is kind of uh, so 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 growth, uh, green, and gati. If we refer uh, three G's in that sense. So of course it was clearly a growth focused budget because we all talked about this capital expenditure from government side uh, is at seven and a half lakh crore compared to it was five and a half lakh crore last year. India is all about poor logistics and the slow movement of goods. So there is a lot that has been talked about improving efficiency there in terms of this Kati Shakti uh, project and take it further. And green, of course, is about energy transition. And, you know, we talk about how to reach to a stage where here we have carbon neutral or zero kind of emission, net emission economy at some stage. Um, of course, we are in a digital era, so the digital footprint was visible in the entire budget. So if you had listened to the first half carefully, you feel it's all like IT and digital budget, which is going on. And from that perspective, it was a great kind of budget, uh, short speech and so many areas were covered. Now, if I start with, uh, you know, there are any budget can address the growth issue from two sides. Either you look at the demand side or you look at the supply side. And those who probably were looking at supply side measures, they got everything. I mean, there were a lot of announcements. But if you are looking from the demand side, you know, there was disappointment. Several consumers or, you know, kind of households didn't get anything in terms of tax benefit or, you know, improve, enhance kind of uh, limit. Uh, so that is, of course, in a given budget, you can't address everything. So we'll have to focus and budget should not be looked at, you know, as a one day event and say what is going to be the immediate a week effect or one day effect on capital markets or how stock markets have behaved. I mean, it should still be a longer term thing. So if you see the achievements over a long period of time, for instance, in last fiscal year, we achieved Air India divestment. That was a huge thing because you know, it, it's not easy. There are a lot of challenges, a lot of structuring was required. And it, they, we were trying probably for more than a decade to do that. So now once we have done that, the learnings will help us going forward to achieve similar divestments in a more efficient and a faster way. The same is true for LIC's IP. It's not a joke. And from that perspective, once we complete this, there are a lot of opportunities going forward. So it's budget post GST, and, you know, this rail budget that we had where you make all announcement, which train would start on which route. It's more of a annual statement where the finance minister can come and say, what is that we have done over the years and provide some sort of direction going forward. So, yes, we often talk about the short term reaction of the market and more so while we talk about capital market, it's all about equity markets. We should look at the long term and the short term impact of that. So I'll just spend time on the equity side since we have discussed enough of it. The only concern that one might have for this budget because, you know, the fiscal deficit, as we discussed, is going to be about 6.9%. Then next year, it's going to be 6.4%. But if we look at the tax buoyancy that we achieve, it might so happen that if we kind of have decent nominal GDP growth rate going forward and the estimates work out well, we might not have 6.4% as well. And that may kind of neutralize any potential risk of a crude oil price rise and subsequent import of the bill that might increase. So if we look at from that perspective, uh, there is some headroom or kind of elbow room which is available. But let me just focus on 
bond market rather than equity market because we saw that while equity market was quite happy on a Im immediate reaction depending on whether you treat that positive move on that day was on the back of US market or was it due to budget because to see the opening and closing there was not much of a difference from that perspective. Now the bond market of course is sort of worried and we spoke I mean a couple of panelists also spoke about it that the yield is now about 6.93 percent and it goes to seven percent and from that perspective then maybe the increase in cost of borrowing for both government and government in fact wants that you know it's not like it's intending to crowd out private investment it thinks that if it starts spending the capex cycle will pick up and private investments will sort of crowd in rather than getting crowd out now from that perspective we may see that the cost will increase but this narrative that we have built over the years and as any easy explanation saying that the bond yield rising is a bad news for equity market and bond yield falling is sort of a great news because cheap money is available it's sort of a easy trick that we have worked out to explain both corrections and the rise in the market when we are unable to explain using economic factors let me just share some data with you if you look at us markets in the month of march 2020 when global markets fell by 30 to 40 percent across the board in 20 days U.S. bond yields fell from 1.5% to 50 basis point. So it became one third literally because there was a safe haven demand for U.S. bonds and money moved in that along with gold at that point. Cryptos also fell. So there was a decline in bond yield and simultaneous decline in equity markets. See the year end 2020 bond yield jumped to 0.93%. Markets were fully recovered and probably beyond what they were in Feb 2020. 2021 in US bond yield jumped from 0.93% to 1.52%. It's a nonsense thing to calculate percentage growth on percentage, but it was 63% spike from 0.93% to 1.52%. US markets delivered 26% last year. So it's not easy. If you go back to the history, it's the same. India had bond yields were 10 year bond yield was about 5.5%, 5% in 2004. By 2007, it was eight and a half percent. The markets jumped from less than 10,000 to 21,000 on Sensex. So there is some misconception about that direct relationship between bond yields rising in any market and equity markets falling or vice versa. It's not like that. Why? Because bond yield and inflation, if you look at it, has an interesting relationship. Inflation up to a point is good for equity. Because it represents that there is a growth which has returned, there is a demand for capital, there is demand for resources, and therefore you see that inflation is sort of our bond yields are rising. So bond yield rising to an extent is a thing that where bonds are oversupplied or the people are selling that, it doesn't tell a lot about equity markets. So when we look at our kind of budget at the moment, it's too much for us to read, be it US bond yields rising or Indian bond yields rising, up to a point, bond yield rising or inflation rising is good for the economy, good for the growth and good for the equity markets to an extent. The worry should be, if I were to conclude, is when you have a situation on a GDP growth in Indian context, for instance, if you look at nominal GDP growth of let's say 12%, now if 7% is coming from the real growth and 5% is coming from GDP deflator, uh, there is no issue. Your real growth should ideally be contributing more than the deflator. If that relationship reverses, then that's the sort of danger sign because you are moving in the direction where kind of then to increase cost start uh, or, or kind of cost of funds, uh, liquidity kind of crunch would start hurting. Before I close, let me just share for those who are interested. If you believe in a narrative that the discounted cash flow that we use to value markets. If the interest rates are low, the discount rate is low. If interest rates are high, discount rate is high. Please read James Montier from GMO, which is about $500 billion funds in US. He has written an excellent piece. If the discount rate goes down or interest rate goes down, also numerator goes down. So growth expectations also taper down because low inflation is also because possibly the growth expectations are lower. So to that extent, 
it's a two way impact and not one way. So if I, I may just conclude with by saying this, that it's for sure a kind of difficult for the bond market for equity market long term. It's a phenomenal budget giving a clear direction on which way we are going. Forget about some 6.8 versus 6.9% numbers. We need to be careful whether the funds that capex that we are kind of you know planning for and the money that will government might borrow if it doesn't bring this private investment uh, and sort of capex cycle doesn't kick in probably due to whatever global factors that might be a bit of a challenge but you can plan only this much so thank you uh, the finance minister for presenting this budget and thank you SHM for giving this opportunity and giving opportunity to include this discussion before law takes over thank you everyone Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Joshipura. Uh, very interesting on three Gs, growth, green and Gati. Interesting point on the inflation being good to for the equity market to an extent clearly kicks in the diminishing law of marginal utility. It's just that that level of the diminishing utility is something which evolves and also is kind of subjective, but I agree to you on that point and completely agree with, it, with you on the inflation or the yields impacting the prices because there is not just a denominator effect, there is a numerator effect as well. So if you take both sides of the play, it could go it could go either way as opposed to the linear relationship. Uh, very well made point. Uh, with that, obviously we have covered all our panelists today. We have run uh, over time by 15 minutes, but I thought that it would, in the interest of participants, we need to cover all the topics uh, and do justice to it. And thank you so much for all the uh, all the panelists to to stay put. Uh, we did start at the you know uh, our panel uh, discussion with Mr. Agarwal, who said Nifty 21,018 months. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Sandeep gave good view on the digital area plus the, you know the digital currency and the crypto. Uh, Mr. Gupta spoke about the climate change. Then Mr. Subnavis threw, threw light on the capital formation and how it is still not up to where it ought to be. Uh, then Mr. Mr. Uh, Agarwal then obviously gave us view on, on the Wagner theory and the uh, and the Keynesian and how this hopefully will converge into what we are what we are ought for. Mr. Sinivasan gives a very good very good very good view on the calibrated approach which is required for the policy. And not the and not the knee jerk reaction and the importance of that and clearly the diminishing utility of inflation for the equity market uh, as suggested by Dr. Joshi Pura. I think uh, all this diverse views uh, in in this limited time must have been really fruitful for our participants. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have much we don't have any time for any question answer or interaction that I will leave upon participants to do it one on one or along with us champ. If you have any questions or any further clarification, it was an extremely good session. Uh, I would like to thank each one of the panelists for a really insightful view and some um, some things to 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 uh, evolve some things to wonder and some things to observe and we will be keen, keenly watching this space. I want to thank each of the participants uh, to, to come today and want to thank Ashocham, Mr. Rajora and his entire team to organize this event. All I want to say to everybody today is stay safe, stay healthy, always diversify and never time the market. Uh, with that, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you, everybody. Jay. Thank you. Jay. Oh, the last one was really good one. Never time the market. Never. It's just for fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never, never time to work it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, nice Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, very and, nice and, uh, oh. Rajura, Yeah, anything, sir? sir? No, sir. I just I joined you. I joined Mr. Chaturvedi in expressing my sincere thanks to all the participants, eminent I mean, speakers. Discussion have been really very, very, you know, in depth discussion, very informative. And my sincere thanks to all the sponsors. Uh, TCI, Renew Power, Reliance Securities, SMC, BSC, and all. So I also thank all the participants on behalf of SHM, and uh, we will meet uh, next time again very soon. And uh, request all the eminent speakers to kindly be with SHM, and your support is really very very good to us. And uh, of course, my special thanks to our chairman, Mr. Chaturvedi, who has uh, been you know here for one and a half hour. Uh, you know, uh, moderating this session. <laughs> and so special thanks to you, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajore, and happy weekend to all. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.